tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi friends, we're using the Bifrost Graph editor today. The community needs, we're in uh, late summer of two, 2019, the community needs more tutorials about the graph editor and I know very little about it actually, but the things I know I'm always publishing and sharing and this is one of the things I learned about uh, mathematical functions here. Windows Bifrost Graph Editor. If you don't see this, you need to go to Settings Preferences and then to the Plugin Manager. And in the Plugin Manager, you just activate the Bifrost nodes. Uh, I think four or five of them. And one is the Bifrost Graph Editor. I already docked the Bifrost Graph Editor down here. And you always start with either opening a previous graph representation which you created or create a new graph. That's what I'm going to do. And it always starts with an input and an output. And uh, we're going to use geometry as an input and because we want to work on geometry rather than on something else. So we can just delete the input. So it's uh, basically doing nothing. We have an output here. Let us create a plane and scale that plane up quite a bit and add more subdivisions. And I give it a new material. I prepared a standard uh, shader here, which is not really sexy, but um, it's quite all right. That's what it looks like. Now I need a new input, and that's this geometry here. And I middle mouse drag the P plane, the polygon plane one, into this field. So I have an input and an output. Now when I directly connect this mesh to the output, nothing happens. I create a second piece of geometry which behaves exactly as the, as the one before. That's not really interesting. But what I'll do now is I'll work on the component level of this object. The components are all the details here, all the points. And the nodes we need here are called get point position and set point position. So first we need to get the point positions, the positions of all these points here on the geometry from that node here. And you press the key tab in an empty space here. And uh, these are the recent commands I've used before. Uh, in order to get the point positions, you need to know and memorize that. It's a get point position. I just type in GPP rather than typing in the whole string. And I get two things offered. One is get particle solver properties, so that's P, P as well, and the get point position option here. So I can get the point positions now from this mesh. So the mesh, this geometry, needs to feed in its whole structure in order to in enable us to get the point position. This node is the container for all the components basically. In order to put these things out and finalize the whole programming sequence here, I need to tap here again and set the point positions. So uh, I get more options now and uh, one of them is set point position. So this is totally symmetrical. I have a geometry and I feed the information about the geometry into this node, which does a lot of work. I could open this and you will see what it actually does. And it reads all the components here. Many thousands in many cases, you know, a few hundreds, I guess, here. And finally, I do something with it. And uh, then the points are written in a new way. So the geometry is being deformed, basically. And I feed this deformation information of the component level into the mesh output level. And I get an error uh, message because no, no, it's not a real error, it's just, just a warning, cannot draw an object with no points, that's true, because we don't have anything in here. Now we use a sign function 
and the sign functions you type just type in sign and it's right here when you connect the point position output now to the value of the sign and put this into the positions here so green to green to green you still get that warning cannot draw an object with no points but you need to tell the set point position on what kind of geometry should I work with them because now you could put in a different geometry for example for example a sphere but uh, this node needs to know what kind of geometry to work on and uh, we just connect the output of the original plane to the geometry and you can see it has a deformation here according to that sign function we disconnect this and feed another node in here so tab again and we want to place a, a random node in here and the randomness in the terminology of the graph editor is called noise so we type in noise we have three options and just let's grab the curl noise which is not too simple and not too complex curl no noise wants a position great we have point position here and it has an output sorry and it has an output noise and that can be fed into the sine curve uh, into the sine function and then you get this object here now here is an inviting option here to input time and um, with the right mouse click you can create a value node but we want uh, uh, not the the time could be set by a value node to say 122 but we want the time to be dynamic that's why we tap key and type in time and it is the, one of the options one of the two ones is time node the time node has no input uh, because it's just producing time it's a factory which makes time in seconds in ticks in frames and in frame length and what we'll do now is we feed into the random function into the curl noise the time in seconds so it doesn't go too fast you see this object has changed and now you see the deformation working according to time We make a new connection here and the, that's the third one the third mathematical function which is simple it's a multiply function and we choose the simple multiplication gives us an error message in red because the multiply node is not connected to anything but we can put the output into the sign and the multiply node and we can put in the noise here so you see the noise coming in here and here's another plus sign which uh, enables us to multiply, multiply with a certain value because this node here has nothing to multiply to put in a multiplication factor like 2.3 or something like that there's just no entry field that's typical for programming we need an input and uh, you can read this here in the description so you have two tabs here and one is the info and the info tells you that we need an input in this case right mouse click we create a value node you could just type as well uh, the tab key somewhere in the empty space here uh, of the bifrost graph editor and type in value and then you get a value node as well so the value node is down here now and the value node has options to type in something but not what we actually want because the type is of array uh, array and when we click here we see that there are three four options actually simple vector matrix and other and we're currently in vector but we just want to type in a multiplication of a, just a sim simple number which is under simple and it's not an array it's just a simple floating point number floating point means uh, rather than integer which would be one two three four five floating point would uh, be two point two etc so all these uh, numbers would be possible now and you actually see the value here and when you type in actually you, the, the object here has disappeared because it's the value it's multiplied by zero but if we multiply it by three point one 
we get quite a big object here, which looks a little bit like the block, a block now, because we see the sign working more dramatically now, because the multiplication comes before the sign. So uh, the value which is being fed into the sign is much uh, stronger now than uh, before. Well, just to recap things, we have geometry as an input. We're reading the position of the points on this surface, this one, and we're feeding the points into the output. It's not enough to just feed the point positions into the output. We need a set point position node here in the graph. In between we can do basically anything and uh, multiply needs an extra node in order to have the multiplication with a value other than zero. Zero makes it infinitely small everything but you can use many mathematical functions and you find lots of them, uh, basically all of them, when you use the tab key and just search for them. So here you have all nodes, here you have the core nodes, graph, logic, math, etc. A sine is add, etc. Lots of them. Cosine, difference, and um, increment. Uh, lots of them. So it's a very, very rich programming area here. And I know, and you know probably as well, that you can easily create such a thing uh, w uh, with other means, but uh, you can see that it's a very, very flexible way to create it as well. And this leads to maybe results which you could never achieve with lots of deformations here, with the standard deformation functions like, which you read uh, reach under FX and um, using fields and solvers. Of course you can render it, and I'll show you the rendered animation now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.